Hello everyone, welcome to WebDoubt. Today in this video, we have Devjot Singh Sidhu with us, who will be sharing his placement experience of getting placed in IDFC First Bank. So let's begin this video. Hi Devjot. So can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Hi Navya. Uh, so uh, as Navya just mentioned, I'm Devjot and I am a CSC undergrad from VIT Vellore, and I was recently placed with IDFC First Bank during my on-campus interview or uh, on-campus placements. As far as my hobbies are concerned, I am someone who's always loved to program and code. I've been coding since I was in sixth grade, so it's been almost eleven years since I've been doing that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll come to the main highlight of this video. So can you please share the interview process that you went through during uh, this IDFC, all the rounds that you had so that our viewers can know how it actually is? Yeah, sure. So just like most of the companies that come for on-campus placements, I had to undergo a series of rounds, not just a single round. So the first one, which is usually the online test, uh, that was the same that we were subjected to. <clears throat> Our online test actually had two rounds. So the first round was an MCQ round, which had multiple correct questions as well. So basically the answers could have more than one correct options. <clears throat> and apart from that, the level of the questions were quite easy. They were not very difficult. They were mediocre level to easy level. And they were from the domains of DPMS, basic data structures, general aptitude, and some portions of operating system. <clears throat> After that, we had two coding questions. Both of them were mediocre level. The first one was not based on optimization. It was based on the correctness approach. And the second one was based on the correct output as well as the optimizations. So for the first one, uh, the input was very small. It, it was an array of around 15 or 20 elements, that's it. So, and the solution involved a solution which had a time complexity of n squared, oh, sorry, n cube. So <clears throat> this is something that I would actually like to point out because when I first saw that question, I was a bit hesitant to actually solve it using the n cube solution because that was what came to my mind for the first time, but then I thought that that can surely not be the answer because usually n cube solutions are very bad solution. However, I realized that the input is very short, very small, and hence that can be a possible answer. And thankfully it was. Apart from that, the second question was based on dynamic programming and it was easily solvable. After this, we had two rounds of interviews. The first round was a techno manager round and the second one was an HR round. So in the techno manager round, we were asked mostly about our projects, the past projects that we've done. Now for this, I would actually recommend people to be very thorough with their projects because I was asked a lot of questions from whatever I had told them about my projects. And apart from that, uh, they had asked very basic uh, DSA questions. Uh, one of them was a character counter from a given string. And the other one, I do not remember quite well, but I think that was from something related to the heaps section. So priority queues and all. And for the HR round, they had normal questions such as uh, if I'm given a sudden task in the middle of the night, will I be able to take it? And do I have any uh, issues with work locations across the country, et cetera. Okay, uh, so next is that uh, it will be great if you could provide us with some tips and suggestions so that uh, people can find it helpful who are yet to have their placements and their placements are soon and near. So tips and suggestions would be much appreciated. Sure, so the first thing that really comes to my mind is that focus on your personal growth apart from your academics. So that is something that is very important. You need to be, look, your colleges and all, they'll give you the theoretical knowledge and everything. That's great and that's fine. And that's essential as well, because 
what I told you about the MCQs, that is what uh, will define your MCQ scores and all. But after that, the coding and the interviews, that is something that you'll need to develop on yourself. So you will need to use that theoretical knowledge that you learn in the classes and practice a lot so that you gain the practical experience. Another tip that I would like to suggest a lot of people is that you should not be language dependent. So say you, your primary DSA language is C++ or it is Java. You should not be confined or you should not be bounded by that particular language. Sometimes there is a very good tutorial available on the net, which is not in the language of your choice. But a lot of people they just skip that because they think that they'll not, they'll not be able to understand it. It's better that you go for the logic and not the language. Okay, uh, next is that you also mentioned that uh, having a good resume is uh, like a very important thing to have during placement. So uh, can you suggest some tips like how to create a good resume and what all should be actually included in it so that uh, it highlights you from other competitors? Yeah, sure. That's actually a very good point. Uh, we really need to have a very good resume. Uh, one of the things that my interviewers asked was, uh, they came to know about my project through my resume, as one can imagine. And they, uh, my interviewer, the first one, the techno manager one, he was actually sharing his screen. So his, I could see that my resume was open in his laptop. And uh, so one of the first things that I would like to point out is that keep your resume, especially for freshers, it should be not very long. So personally, I've been advised by my seniors and I'll advise everyone the same that it should be, it should not be more than a one, more than one page long. And it should have almost all the highlights of your life from your academic scores, from your technical skills, from your projects to your work experience, to everything. And suppose you have say published some research papers or something during your college years, I would highly recommend that you should put that in your resumes. Uh, under publication history yeah okay uh, so i suppose that you must have went through a virtual interview to during this placement so uh, what according to you are the pros and cons you would say uh, for the virtual interviews so are they better like according to you from uh, the like offline interviews or this offline were better so I've had the privilege of giving both actually, because for my internships, I had appeared for a few offline interviews and I would certainly say that offline interviews are much better in my honest opinion. The primary reason is that sometimes you are able to, sometimes what will happen during online interviews is that you're not able to judge what the interviewer exactly wants, but from the body language, when you're sitting in front of them, it's very easy for you to grasp what exactly does he want, he or she wants, and then you can twist or tell your answers accordingly. Apart from that, uh, as you mentioned, uh, online interviews have their pros as well. So primarily it being that when you are in the comfort of your home and all, it's basically you have that relaxation that, okay, I do not have to go anywhere. And you know, every time that you are at your home, you have that sense of comfort and you're in the zone. So that's definitely a plus point. But again, I think that offline interviews are much better. Uh, so my last question would be, what would you suggest people so that they become more productive during their uh, college life, which would actually help them uh, indirectly in their interviews? So what tips would you finally give? Sure. So, um, me, I personally, what I did was I used to have a study plan and it was based on something known as the Pomodoro technique. So this technique basically allows you to uh, set intervals of your productive work time and all. So say if you have set an interval of 25 minutes, so after every four intervals, it will give you a long break of around 30 to 35 minutes. And if you have like shorter intervals, Hello. So I <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> As I was saying that uh, the technique basically allows you to set some intervals 
and after say every four or five intervals it will give you a longer break of say 30 to 35 minutes and in between the intervals it usually has a smaller break of around 10 to 15 minutes and this was something that really helped me uh, go through my work hours and all <clears throat> apart from this i would really suggest that you should try to solve at least one problem per day <clears throat> especially say if your uh, uh, placement season starts in july i would suggest that you should make it a habit from january to start preparing for at least one problem each day and the benefit of this apart from practice is that many a times you'll notice that you will get some questions that are if they're not even if they're not exactly the same they're somewhat related to something that you've already done in the past so yeah that is something that i would definitely uh, ask people to keep in mind so with this we come to the end of this video thank you devjot for joining and sharing your experience with all and uh, i would say that please like share and subscribe our channel if you liked his interview experience and we'll be coming with more such videos where different people will share uh, their interview experiences of different companies so stay tuned thank you